The chair notes the time is 6.02. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw. This public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately view the proceedings in real time via technological means. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. We will begin with a roll call of ZBA members. Steve Judge is present. Ms. Tammy Parks? Here. Mr. Dylan Maxfield? Here. Mr. Craig Meadows, I know he's trying to um, um, call in. We'll, wait, we'll um, acknowledge that. Mr. Gilbert? Present. And I also want to note the presence of our associate member, Sarah Marshall, who will be in panel for the next matter. Also in attendance tonight is um, Ms. Maureen Pollock, planner with the town of Amherst. Um, and I think later Rob Mora, the building commissioner will also be in attendance. Tonight's agenda, a public meeting on ZBA FY 2023-11, North Square at Mill District. Request a review of the proposed alterations to the site and the building and to determine the changes to be considered insubstantial as they relate to the previously approved comprehensive permit decision, ZBA FY 2017-07 for the site and building B in order to allow the commercial retail uses of proposed class one restaurant with seasonal outdoor dining and a proposed bakery. Located at 7585 Cowles Road, map 5A, parcel 139, commercial COM zoning district. In a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-04, Redwood Construction, Inc. request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-21 for proposed modifications to conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plans and management plan under section 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw located at Renew Amherst 266 East Hadley Road, map 16D, parcel 13, neighborhood residential RN zoning district. This is continued from our November 10th, 2022 meeting. After that general public comment period on matters not before the board tonight, other business and then other business not anticipated within 48 hours. The first order of business tonight is ZBA. Uh, I want to note the presence of Mr. Meadows uh, for the roll call. Um, so we have all members of the panel uh, in attendance. The first order of business tonight is ZBA 2023 11. North Square at Mill District. Request a review of proposed alterations to the site and building and to determine changes to be considered insubstantial as they relate to the previously approved comprehensive permit decision, ZBA FY 2017-07, for the site and building B in order that the commercial retail uses of the proposed Class 1 restaurant with seasonal outdoor dining and proposed bakery located at 7585 Cowles Road Map 5A, Parcel 139, Commercial, COM Zoning District. And panel for the consideration of ZBA 2023-11 is myself, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, Mr. Meadows, and Mr. Gilbert. We had a site visit on Tuesday the 13th 
at that site visit, we um, we saw the the two proposed business locations in the building. We um, we observed the interior under construction and the plans. We talked with the architect of the uh, and the manager regarding those plans. We saw the uh, changes to the sidewalk in front and the and the front of the coffee shop signage change. We saw the we went out and observed the ADA um, compliant ramp in, for the back exit. Um, we noted the slope of the front entrance ramp, and we also noted that the floor at the front entrance, the floor on the, the bakery would be raised so that there would not be a step down, I think, into the, um, the, the bakery premises. Um, other than that, we walked around the premises, made observations, but our, our uh, site visit was mostly to review. Oh, and we also looked at the trellis, the lighting, uh, and the changes that may have to be made to the trellis to accommodate the security camera. I think that's pretty much it for the site visit. If there's anything else that members on the site visit wish to note, uh, this is the time to do so. All right, um, in terms of submissions, we have a submission, which is an email to me from um, WD Cowles Inc. and signed by Arthur Haskins, Director of Real Estate and Community Development at the Cowles Company. This includes a request for the approval of insubstantial changes, a management plan, several drawings uh, of the ex both site plans, interior, as well as external drawings. It includes a management plan. Um, uh, includes, excuse me, a uh, um, approval under Article 14, uh, additional management plan from the, the bakery, some stock photos submitted of chairs. It includes the front of the um, the building, which is the um, an page A3. Page A3.1 is a uh, bird's eye view of the, the bakery. Page A3.2, a note, again, a site plan as well as uh, elevation. A.3.3 A3 .3 includes more detailed drawings, management plan for the restaurant, um, Futura, it's the draft Futura menu, but it's the draft um, of the coffee shop. It shows the trellis, the, the uh, banquet, the banquet seats, exterior chairs, a light, uh, an example of the lighting proposed for the, uh, the signage and some, and some tables as well as additional um, renderings A2 and A2.1, which are both um, elevations as well as a bird's eye view of the of the uh, proposed build out, as well as A2 and A2.3. Again, um, elevations and site plans of the build out. I think there's additional material that will be provided by the applicant tonight as well, uh, be shown on the screen. Um, that is the exact extent of the of submissions that I have. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, determine who is representing the uh, applicant at this point and have them make a presentation. But whoever that is, please uh, state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is Arthur Haskins. Um, I work for WD Coles as the Director of Real Estate and Community Development. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, I managed the lease up, residential lease up of North Square from 2018 pre construction to 2021, where residential occupancy reached our full capacity. And in November of 2021, I joined um, WD Coles um, as director of real estate. Um, today, as representative of the commercial units uh, owners at North Square, WD Coles, we'd like to request the approval of the insubst insubstantial changes you mentioned. Um, we are looking, as you mentioned, for two tenants. We have two prospective tenants, uh, Futura Coffee Roasters Cafe, a regenerative agriculture um, a cafe that is a barista-style offering with a seating capacity of 49 people. And that would be at the address of 73 Coles Road unit. And uh, directly next door is the Carefree Cakery, which is the bakery you have mentioned uh, which is a fair trade trade bakery specializing in celebration cakes to be located at 71. 
the exterior changes um, proposed as um, described in um, earlier is the exterior timber trellis, outdoor seating placement, and, and the ADA access ramp to be installed at the second emergency egress um, at the back of the 75 Cold Road overall North Square building. Um, if I may share my screen, I have a um, elevation depiction to help illustrate um, what I'm, I'm looking to describe. Yes, please do, Mr. Haskins. Kindly bear with me. Are you able to see my photograph of the 73 and 71 Coles Road units? Yes. This is where the first proposed changes would occur. Today, are you able to see my mouse cursor? Yep. We are proposing a timber trellis to be located over the primary egress of this unit, which is 73 Coles Road. With this timber trellis underneath would be bank bankhead seating a table and chairs as depicted in this image are you able to see the artist computer rendering of the same location with those items placed yes we are if i may note i did not have this in time for the meeting today but there is a camera that is located at the corner of this unit and there is a note to design the timber trellis in a way that will not impede the view of the camera angles. So these tails, this trellis would be brought in um, just enough not to impede the view. And to illustrate, I'll just show you what that um, corner camera is typically looking at. This is just a capture on a random day of what camera angles are um, viewed from that, um, from that location. And again, this is the camera that I'm talking yeah. about here. Um, so back to the rendering. This is the, the uh, depiction of the, the trellis. Um, the coloring is depicted as accurate as possible for the material uh, being a cedar or natural material. And as noted in um, your earlier description, I also do have renderings of the banquet seating proposed the proposed chairs and tables um, designs as well. May I answer any questions so far? Are there any questions from members of the board? Okay, I guess, oh, Ms. Parks. Where will the, um, the sign go, the signage go? Is it above or below the trellis? It is um, to be located below the trellis so that it is um, best viewed from eye level, typical eye level standing at the ground. Kindly bear with me while I zoom in to the Coon Riddle Architect elevation rendering depicting the Futura Coffee Roasters signage. Okay, the I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. To further illustrate, if I may, um, I just have one other photo that I had prepared available to show depicting present day North Square 75 Coles Road. And today, um, out of frame is our Mill District General Store and local art gallery that were our first businesses. Um, our uh, North Square Property Management Office, this, um, this entire development continues to be maintained uh, by Beacon Residential Management for, for maintenance. Um, we have today um, a charcuterie business, the North Amherst Public Library's temporary location, um, a clothing retailer, the Closet, um, a Pilates instructor, Balance Birch, and then this is the location of the Futura Coffee Roasters and then Carefree Cakery that we were discussing. Mr. Haskins, can you give us also a view of the, or a rendering of what the sign would look like for the coffee roasters? 
I think it's Alum. Right? Oh, I I we have this artistic elevate elevation of um, de as depicted on the architectural plans. Mm -hmm. And the idea is we've approached a sign company that would have a um, soft backlighting in um, light emitting diode backlighting, low voltage would be behind the signage. And I have an example of what that typically looks like, if you can mm -hmm. see my screen. And that yeah. um, would be tied into our high efficiency um, lighting systems to uh, control illumination and uh, to control evening hours, um, uh, automatic schedules for on and off um, as well. Thank you. It looks like there's no further questions about the coffee roaster. Uh, do you want to move on to the cakery? So the cakery was approved uh, via Article 14 um, previously, and um, it is located right next door to the 73 Coles Road unit at Unit 71. This is a fair trade um, bakery that specializes in celebration cakes with a front uh, customer facing area, a total capacity of just 10. So this unit does not require the ADA egress. Um, this one only requires, I'm sorry, this unit does not require the second egress that has the ADA ramp. However, um, we can go back to the Futura floor plan that um, depicts the path out to the second emergency egress ADA ramp. That would be the, the third change that we are proposing as well. So mm -hmm. kindly take note first of the Carefree Capri floor plan. This is um, something that is not easily seen on these, these drawings, but as you saw in person um, the other day when, when viewing and touring the location uh, where these are proposed, foundation um, elevation height, top of foundation difference between the cafe and the cafe where the cafe is, a, is approximately uh, four, three, three to four feet higher than the, the, um, the bakery. And so to negate some of that height difference, um, as you noted as well, the front egress door is a step down. However, we are raising the floor using uh, web trusses to get a level surface directly egress from the street level, same level within the cake room once built. And it helps us shorten that ramp. There's less of a drop to have to, um, to, have to address with the ADA ramp for Futura as it proceeds next to this unit to um, restrooms that actually are drawn into the cakery depiction. So you can actually see how that coincides with, with the bakery. So these are separate spaces. However, we do have a door allowing access. Um, it only made sense to allow in design a, a second access at the back of the, the cakery kitchen to the hallway, which would allow um, the business owner um, use of this this back entrance as well for emergencies or um, perhaps for occasional deliveries that may require um, going through this path. But uh, I don't foresee much use other than uh, typically for perhaps emergencies. If I may um, switch back to the Futura Cafe floor plan depiction, that way I can show you in more detail the ADA ramp that's proposed. Mm -hmm. with me as I zoom. Um, so if I can walk you through this plan just so that it makes sense. What I had shown you previously with the elevations is the terraceless area with the seating here where my cursor is, if you can see it. This would be the primary entrance where um, cafe patrons would be entering. There is an ability to go down this ramp to two ADA bathrooms that would be located at the back of the space as part of this, now part of the 73 code use it for the ADA bathrooms and a break room storage room area. With this 49 seating capacity, we, we, we needed to maximize the capacity so that it made sense for the, the tenants. 
And previous designs, we had played with the idea of placing both of the required ADA bathrooms on the space above. However, in order to increase capacity, this turned out to be a great solution suggested um, by the tenants and drawn by the architects. And this also allows us to reach this required second form of egress. Today, this second um, egress area has a set of stairs, but no ramp. And for it to be compliant, we do need to include an ADA ramp, which is designed uh, compliant with the Mass Architectural Access Board of 112 slope or 8.3%. Here, where it indicates the 19 foot distance for of a ramp that does not exist today that we're proposing. We're up. You're breaking up, Mr. Haskins. Um, I was just noting the 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 uh, ramp area again. And you said that that's excuse me. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to make. You said that's a eight point eight and a half degree slope to that ramp 8.3 8.3 8. 8. So, and that does meet with ada requirements um yes um i actually confirmed that with our um, architect at coon riddle that's a one okay. slope or 8.3 percent okay and the front door is um level right for ada that's correct that's yes yeah. that one already is at at the yeah walk level yeah okay i just have one question um mr haskins and that was for the uh, just reconfirmed to me that the entrance to the front of the cakery is at level is that correct it is or, uh, yeah. it, it will be. To be that's correct it will be yeah so it will be by raising the floor Yes, today it's a 16 inch difference in height, which we are going to yeah. be um, raising via uh, floor trusses and. And then the other thing is that uh, I know it's not required or you said it's not required to have a second entrance when the when the um, occupancy is so low. But in order, if it had to, if, if a disabled person or a wheelchair bound person had to use the um, back entrance, they would proceed through the kitchen out through that um, towards the public restrooms and out towards the ramp. Is that right? That is correct. The, um, and, there's, and it's wide enough to do that. There's enough correct. clearance for a wheelchair. All right. Okay. All right. Are there other questions? And Mr. Haskins, do you have anything else you want to present? Um, I do not. Uh, members of the board, do you have any questions? I guess not. This is a public meeting and our, our task here is really to um, decide if we make a determination that the requested changes from the applicant are insubstantial and can be um, um, approved um, by the building commissioner and there's no need for a public hearing on these changes. So we're just reviewing the outdoor changes, um, the trellis, the outdoor seating, the ADA ramp and the commercial signage. Um, are there any questions from members of the board or any discussion? Regarding that, before we have a, a vote to approve the applicant's request for insubstantial changes, to determine these as changes as, as in, insubstantial. If there's no, uh, Mr. Maxfield. I was just going to say, as long as we're, we're just doing discussion before a vote. Uh, yep. I mean, yeah, I, I certainly think this meets the threshold and seems relatively insubstantial to the comprehensive permit that we've, that the, this board has already issued. So, I'm, I'm in favor of, uh, of voting for this. So I'd entertain a motion that um, to approve the request of changes to the comprehensive permit as insubstantial changes. And since this is not a 
um, not a, we're not determined making a um, decision on a special permit itself. This just requires three votes, a uh, simple majority. So, do I have such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We've got two seconds. Um, <laughs> Mr. Meadows and Ms. Parks on a tie. Um, if any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, um, this is a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Motion carries uh, by unanimous vote. Mr. Haskins, congratulations. You have your um, insubstantial. You have your insubstantial changes. <laughs> much appreciated. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. You bet. The next order of business is the continued public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-11, North Square at. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Um, F ZBA FY 2023-04. Redwood Construction Inc. requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-21 for the proposed modifications to conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, condition 4, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plans, and management plan under section 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at Renew Amherst 266 East Hadley Road, Map 16D, Parcel 13, Neighborhood Residence, RN Zoning District. This is continued from a November 10th, 2022 meeting. Um, we had, um, we've already done the, we've had a site visit and we've already reported on that. Uh, for this matter, um, Mrs. Marshall will be uh, impaneled and Mr. Meadows has, uh, was the, was not on this panel. On submission since our last meetings, we have an, um, Mr. White has an email of 12-1, which, we, which are in, is in your packet, an email from the police chief Livingston on 12-5 and 12-17. We have a project application report uh, submitted by staff. And today we received a letter signed by numerous tenants in the project that has also been uh, submitted. Um, we've, this is, a, I think, our fourth hearing on this matter. Uh, we have just a few matters left to consider on this application. Uh, they are designating parking. They are conditions that we haven't uh, determined. Um, designating parking spaces, lot coverage number, length of visit of overnight visitors, a length and number of, vi of, of visit of overnight visitors, security, community gardens, tenant access to the new community rooms, and a few other more technical conditions that are on that are on our plate tonight. So I'd like to proceed with these remaining conditions. After we con consider the conditions and decide whether to apply them, we will then proceed to consider the findings under 9.22 and 10.38 of the bylaw, and then make a decision as to whether to approve this uh, amendment to the special permit. So the first, um, I'm going to run through those conditions, and I'd like to use the uh, con Undetermined um, conditions or open conditions as sort of a um, an agenda for us tonight. The first one is um, designating parking spaces. I think that's condition the forty seven. Yeah, condition forty seven. Um, at, our, at our last meeting, I think this um, condition we the applicant was just going to make sure that they that they were okay with it uh, and they were going to get back to us. And I think we didn't um, make a decision on the parking, but this seems to me this is all consistent with what we had been discussing before. The five ADA compliant parking stalls are marked on the ground with signage and there's one EV station um, that shall be designated and clearly marked on the ground with signage. I think that is, um, I, I don't remember an ob objection from the applicant on that. Am I correct, Mr. Reedy? No. And Mr. White? Go ahead, Tyler. Good with that. No, no yep. objection there. Yep. So um, what I'd like to do is, um, unless there's objection from any member on the, on the board, consider this condition adopted. We're gonna adopt all the conditions in a single vote later on, but 
We'll move forward with considering this one is adopted. The next condition, I think, deals with lot coverage. And that's where you wanted to go from 35.1 or 2% to 35.3%, which is, I think, exactly what you need under current um, lot coverage, under current drawing submitted. But the question was whether the bike racks caused you to have to go a little bit higher. And so I wondered if the um, applicant had any more thoughts on whether 33.35.3 is sufficient, gives you sufficient room to uh, to complete all your business as planned. Um, Maureen, is is Carlos on that you can promote him? I think he might. I don't. I don't think there's going to be any issues with this one, but I don't. If he should be on, he could speak to any kind of. He's, he's not, not. I can. He told me he would be available, um, but. I, from, um, from my understanding, Carlos can speak to more technical aspect when he hops on, but, um, you know, I, you're, you're correct in that the, the additional, um, the additional lot coverage, uh, or the increased proposed lot coverage is because of the, the pads for the bike racks, um, and, and some of the other minor changes that we made. Um, and I, I, I don't, believe, I don't remember the exact number, but I know that it was just a, a, a minor increase to what was approved before. I think 0. 0.2 or 0. 0.3. Yes, it was 0. 0.2, uh, I think, before, and this went to 0. 0.3. And it, this is Carlos's number, so we took it from him. If right. I have it correct. Okay. Yep. If there's no object, if there's no objection from other board members, I'd like to have this one considered approved, and we'll vote it as part of the whole package at the end. All right. The next one is um, the maximum number of overnight visitors per unit currently reads 10 people with a maximum stay of five consecutive nights. Um, this is and typically what we do is leave this up to the um, the, the, the landowner or the, the management company to decide what it is, unless it's outrageous, you know, unless it's an outrageously high number um, and they let them decide how they wish to manage it. Is this is this is the number in your lease? And is this the number that you're comfortable with continuing having? Yes, yes to both of those. Um, our, our lease has been updated to include that uh, language. Um, and so we're, we're comfortable with that with that number. And 10 could be a large number of people. My view is a 10 is a large number of people on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you have family coming in for, for holidays, is that why the number is, is 10? In case you have a two-bedroom apartment, you have family coming in. Is that what you're yeah, looking I, at there? I it's think that's a good, normally see. Yeah, correct. I mean, I think that's you know that's certainly uh, um, a good example of when that number could reach uh, 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 that, or when the when the visitors could reach that number. Um, those numbers did originally come from the currently approved special permit, mm -hmm. which requires us to update the the lease agreement. So um, that number was generated mainly from the special permit. Um, but you're, you're correct in, in that example is, you know, in a case where family comes in for the holidays, you know, and the, in the stipulation that it's only five days maximum, um, kind of helps to mitigate any concerns with too many visitors. Is there any discussion from members of the board regarding this condition? All right, if not, um, without objection, I'd like to have this one be considered as approved and we'll vote on it as part of the whole package. The next is um, condition 75 dealing with security. That's where most of our discussion last week was. The app, um, Mr. White and Mr. Reedy, you had sent a proposal to the staff um, on December 1st, which, um, Asked, which said, the owner shall install one security camera at each door. Uh, let's see, no, review the aforementioned, blah, 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 blah. Um, let me find your exact language to the, to the, um, here we go. Your proposal was to, 
install one security camera per building within 90 days of the approved special permit modification. Two, immediately after the board approval, the owner or its management will have regular check-ins with the police department to discuss property safety and security. Uh, three, on-site security will be provided by on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from nine to three when the new 47 unit building achieves 80% occupancy. Four, review the need for on-site security to occur six months after convent. I think that's yours. Yes. Right. Yes, review the need for on-site security to occur six months after the commencement of on-site security. The ZBA will defer to the police department as to whether on-site security is necessary going forward. Um, that was your proposal. Uh, that was then the staff shared that with the chief of police and Captain Ting. The response from Captain Ting is security's camera should be installed at entrance and exits. And after the initial request for security Thursday through Saturday, as per previous email, I'm good with revisiting the request after a six month time frame in coordination with inspection services. So um, I guess there's a couple of issues that I see uh, for the benefit of the board here. One is um, whether we have just one security camera per building or every entrance and exit is, um, has a security camera. Uh, and the second issue that I have is the wording of the um, the wording of the last portion, number D, uh, where we def quote unquote defer our um, how was it stated? Defer to the police department as to whether on-site security is necessary going forward. I would rather the language say something to the effect that this, the police department will de will determine. Um, whether on site uh, further um, measures for on site security uh, in the future and not have the ZBA deferring to them, but just flat out empower the police department to do this. Um, Rob, is, is that I, I just, uh Sorry, uh, uh, don't forget your question for Rob, but uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, referring to pages. 44 and 45 of the project application report that that is this uh the sort of uh yeah. the um suggested condition um so i just i want you to re be referring to the correct um or updated well, um yeah the updated language. condition 75 page 44 and 45 um owner will install one secure so what you're suggesting is, but in brief, it's having two, um, the board's approval, it's the same management will check in with the Amherst Police Department if we have regular check-ins and the purpose of discussing property and security, property safety and security. On-site security provided Thursday, Friday, Saturday, nine to three, when the new 47 unit building achieves 80% occupancy and review of the need for on-site security shall occur every six months after the commencement of the pro of provided on-site security ZBA shall defer to the Amherst Chief of Police on whether on-site security is continued, suspended, or reinstated at any time after the initial six-month period. The applicant shall notify inspection services anytime there is a change in on-site security. I would prefer that language to be something to the effect that the um, police, the police chief, or, or the Amherst Chief of Police, they want that or they want the police department, Maureen. What's their, do they care about the, who specifically is mentioned? Chief of police or police department. We don't. It looked like the chief wanted yeah. the, the chief, but it's the, immaterial. Whatever time. the chief, what the chief, whatever the police, well, whatever the, the chief wants want the chief to be yeah. 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 So Rob, what I my question was, can we get language that says ZBA that the Amherst Chief of Police uh, shall be um shall determine whether on site security is to be continued, suspended, or reinstated after, at any time after the initial six month period? dot 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 as opposed to the zba shall defer to the amherst chief of police let's just change that i would like to move to change that condition to the amherst chief of police shall determine whether on site does that work it's okay Good. yeah all right it does. all right we're going to do that and insert shell and delete zba shall defer to all right um so we have the general outlines. Two questions exist from the last meeting. The first is whether you have more than one security camera and 
indeed one at every entrance and exit and then we have to talk to about the number of days so the first is um, it seems to me that it doesn't make a lot of sense to have the security cameras not at every entrance and exit especially if they're not being monitored all the time the, the purpose of security cameras is to to without people without actual people there is to have um a, a recordable and viewable record of going in, ins and outs and activities around the security camera so i think the police's request here is is reasonable is there discussion from anybody else and then we'll ask for the uh, comments from the applicant any other members have an alternate view Mr. Reedy or Mr. White, are you good with um, you're good with the police for determining on security? Are you good with the police determining on security cameras? Yeah, I mean, I think um, generally, you know, as you had said before, we had requested what we had requested. The police, including the chief, reviewed it, came back with their suggestions. I think A through D of their suggestions are acceptable to us. I mean, the way that they've presented it. Um, is this these are acceptable conditions uh to the applicant so that's the camera at each door just so i yep. clarify camera at yep. each door camera at each door got it okay yep. so that's what we're discussing right now Thursday, Friday, yep. Saturday. Yep. yeah the, the other parts aren't controversial at all i think the immediate the uh, media question before us is more than one camera per building at each entrance and exit I, and there's no discussion from members of the board on that oh Ms. Marshall, you discussed this last time a little bit about the value of security cameras with the not being um, live monitored. Yeah, no, Go no, ahead. that's, I did, but that's not my concern. I just wonder if, um, if it's the case that whether it should be stated that these are at doors um, through which tenants and guests, guests may enter or exit. I mean, in case there are some external doors that are just storage rooms or i i don't know get i think i think the or purpose when i read those, it those should also be <laughs> no no maybe but i i think the purpose the meaning of this when you look at it is, is each door entrance and door exit and i don't i think the purpose of the, the of this is tenant and management entrance not into storage and I, mm -hmm. we can make that clear in the notes to the um of the meeting and the minutes of the meeting okay but i think you have a good point you, there's no reason i i don't think there's reason to have a security camera over a, a storage closet for the most part other questions all right and the last one is the number of days um i was pretty hardcore on keeping seven days i um uh, i still think that makes sense um I think the commit the uh, commitment of time and money that it from the owners for set for three days is is not a lot. I did a little bit of work on it. Um, on the low end of the estimates that you provided to us, the thirty one dollars an hour for eighteen hours, the three days comes to a total of five hundred and fifty eight dollars a week. That comes to a total of twenty nine thousand dollars a year. You have 209 total units, I think, is what the, when the building is built, you have 209 units. And that comes to about $138 a unit a year or $11 a month. Average rent in that building is what, Mr. White? $1,500 a month? 16? Uh, I don't know the exact number, but somewhere but probably it, between 1500 Yeah. And update to 2000, 1700. yeah, 15 to, yep, 15 to 1700. So you're looking at, you know, less than 1% of your total costs for three days. So, and it would be substantially more for, for um, seven days. I agree, double that, you know, so it'd be almost a percent of your total rent in a month. I don't think that's outrageous to ask, but I also know that the, I think I heard from board members, a pretty strong feeling that three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday was sufficient. I heard that from several board members in the last meeting. Um, I'm not going to force a vote on seven days that um, I think, even though I think it's a good idea, I'm not going to force a vote on that unless other people view that as important. But right now, 
it seems to be a majority for three days at um, of, of, th of six hours apiece. Anybody else have comments on that, um, the number of days of coverage? Mr. Maxwell, Maxfield, I know you said you were at seven and then at five. Are you comfortable with three days? Or I'm comfortable with three days. I'm, I'm comfortable with five or seven. I could, I, but yeah. I, I think my minimum there is definitely, my minimum is, is, is three on there. I know, uh, you know, reading through some of this here, you know, we've got you know, the, the, the police on board. Looks like I, I saw we got a letter from uh, some residents there on board. But mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I, I don't really think that the security guard issue is, is as much about safety as I think it is noise and compliance, which again, the residents, um, I think some of Butters who, who've spoken in this meeting, uh, I, I haven't seen the, the sign letter from them saying that they're they're no longer worried about uh, noise issues from from this place. So I'm still on board with the security guard. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm certainly flexible on, on days. Uh, Maureen, I would just add, I noticed that Mr. Nieto, Carlos Nieto is, is signed in as a panelist in case there's a chance you may, you may need to refer to him. You may want to bring him on as a, he was an attendee, you may want to bring him on as a panelist. Um, the other thing to, to, for us to note, as to your point, is just we'll go back to the chief of police after now, after today, after our dealing with this, and if he finds a, a need for uh, a greater number of nights, it could be imposed by the chief of police. So um, I guess we will, I am comfortable leaving the discretion to the chief of police rather than to us or to the, um, the applicant on the number of days that the uh, security guard is uh, valuable to have on hand. Any other comments on that from, oh, Ms. Marshall, your hands up. Yes, but I wanna just mention something about the second bullet before we move move away sure. from this whole issue. Can I do that yep. now or? You, absolutely, okay. you sure okay. can. Um, I'm wondering what the point of, is of the phrase immediately after the board's approval since I mean, it's not literally like within hours. So, you know, can it just be deleted? Um, you you know, either, to, either clarify we, what it means or get rid of it, but it. How about it, within two weeks? Uh, but of what? Of, of yeah. our taking a vote or of the permit right. becoming effective or? Uh, well, as it reads. Yeah. It's of the board's, it's of the board's approval. Okay. Right? So. If, as opposed to having them go over there to the uh, chief of police tonight, <laughs> if it's approved, right? Uh, how about we say within two weeks? Does That's that work? Right. Mr. Mora, does that work? You can just delete all of that and just say that the owner or its management shall have regular check-ins. I mean, and then it starts as soon as the decision it takes effect. All right, and regular, yeah. And if, it's, if it doesn't happen, you'll hear about it. That's right. And then I just wanted to comment on the third bullet. Uh, we're setting the days and hours. So that is not something that the police chief would be modifying in the future. It would be set at those times and days. The police chief would have the discretion to decide if it stops after six months or continues or, uh, you know, sometime in the future gets reinstated if it's uh, necessary but based on the, the previous uh, criteria of the three days. Oh, so the police chief doesn't have the authority to review this. And if there's a problem in his, in his judgment to require more. Should it say initially? I'm comfortable with the language the way it is. I just wanted to make sure you understood that, that I, I don't think I didn't understand that will give the chief the ability to add three more days if he wants to. I, I don't think we were trying to have that accomplish that option uh, just to keep it going for the three days if the chief decides to do so. Hmm.
Are you? Um, I wonder. Number one is the, are the rest of the board members with three days being permanent without um, without flexibility for the chief to impose more or less? Uh, I already state that. Are the other me members of the board comfortable with having the police chief only be able to to continue or reduce the number of days, or do you think the police chief? If you can reduce the number of days, should be able to increase them. And if so, we'd have to change bullet three some way to say that um, on site security shall initially be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and then, um, but could be increased um, on a determination of the chief of police. Have to have some language to say that. So um, first question is to members of the board, are you comfortable with the way it's, or do you want more flexibility, for, more authority for the chief of police? Mr. Maxfield. Uh, yeah, I, I like I like more flexibility on there. Ms. Marshall, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I, I, I wonder if what is meant, although we may, wish to change it is that for this initial six month period, on site security will be these days and these times. And then after six months, should that be, should it be uh, appropriate to modify that? It could go either way, you know, any kind of modification might be needed and allowed. Because this fourth bullet then refers to after you know, after six months of this on-site security, so the third bullet could specify that it's for the first six months. Yeah, I think. I see the point you're making, Ms. Marshall. Um, we could, I think that could be written in. It could be amended to, to um, clarify that. But I think the threshold question is, do we wanna have additional authority to the, to the police chief to increase the number of days after the six months or to eliminate them after six months? Ms. Parks. Yeah, I, I think if we add on-site security um, initially shall be provided and then in for uh, review the need for increased or decreased on-site security. Well, you, you know, you, how about this? Instead of modifying that first section, in the first sentence in section four, how about modifying the second section? Amherst chief of police shall determine whether on-site security is continued, increased, suspended, or reinstated at any time after the initial six month period. So it could be putting the, giving the chief of police the ability to increase the number of days, number of cameras, whatever it is, um, rather than us. That will solve, I think that solves Ms. Marshall's problem. I think that solves my concern that wasn't addressed initially. Um, Mr. Mora, does that solve, does, does that work as a condition? Is there any reason that we can't do that? If we determine that's the policy we want? Uh, I think you can do that. You know, I, uh, you know, maybe we can finalize the language um, I don't know if we, yeah, you could. if we want to try to do it right now, I'm wondering if it should be that the, you know, the, I'm thinking more like the, the Amherst police chief shall determine on site, whether on site security is continued, suspended or reinstated and at which hours and days at any time after, you know, try to make it a little simpler to understand yeah. what, you know, what we're trying to have the police chief look at. Um, so, but I think, Either way, we get there uh, yeah. and understand what the board is asking for, and adding that initial that initial uh, on-site security in the third bullet. 
Yep. So I think we can get to where we want to be. It may be a question of just massaging the language and I'm, I trust the staff to do that and we'll delegate the staff to, to do that. Um, I'd like to get the comment. The board has talked about this, um, Maureen. And I just wanted to, I had a clarifying question for that yep. bullet three and four. That's for on-site security guard or a, an actual Well, guard. I think at, well, I think it's, I don't know that that's right. I think it's for all on-site security, including the cameras, right? Doesn't this include everything? Any, I don't know what else there would be. There's guards, there's cameras, there's- Well, bullet three says on, well, on-site security shall be provided each Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. when the new 47 unit building achieves 80% occupancy. So is that, I, I, I that implies the guard um, I'm mm -hmm. sure that the cameras yep. wouldn't be only on for those hours Correct. and days. Yeah. So that is just the guard. And then the bullet four, the chief Amherst, chief of police may determine whether on on-site security is increased, uh, is continued, increased, suspended, or reinstated, and and then perhaps um, fin um, massage that a little bit uh, to include uh, adjustments mm -hmm. of hours or, or something like that. At any time after the initial six month period, the applicant shall notify inspection services anytime there is a change to the on-site security um, service. And so um, guard and cameras, uh, or is this, is this just related to the on-site security guard? Well, I think we are. We have security cameras already. They could be increased. Um, I see. I see what you're, the point you're making. I think what. Uh, I think one way to do that is on-site guards initially shall be provided. Um, that says we have a security guard and the chief of police, on-site security guard, and then on-site security by itself in the second phrase, which is more encompassing. So the first place we're just in section three we're just talking about the guards and a number of hours section three uh, four is review of all on-site security he may say you know we don't we don't need you don't need guards if you put up four more security cameras right he may say that and i think you would want i think the applicant would want that flexibility if there's ways that they, they can he can address it i think you'd want to give the chief of police the ability to have as much flexibility as possible but i don't want to overly complicate this we're looking, the, the real question is the security guards in three, we ought to make that clear. And what I think the last point is that you have the chief of police look at all of this. Is the security plan good? And if it's not, you figure it out with the chief of police. And I think that's where we're at here. So I guess what I would suggest, Maureen, is in the first instance, make that specific to security guards. And so in the third bullet point, make that secure, specific to security guards. And in the fourth bullet point, make that specific to all on-site security, which includes security guards, cameras, whatever, you know, door locks, whatever it is. But that's a more, you see what I mean? And I think that makes sense. That's the way to do it. I'd like to get reaction from the applicant to those proposed changes, the, the kind of amorphous idea that we've thrust upon you here, but I think you kind of get where we're coming from. Yeah, I mean, I think from, from our perspective, as long as increase is balanced by decrease and and modified you know as long as there's a not a suggestion that there's only one path for the police chief to take right, right. i think let, let given... i think totally on the same page right so then it puts it in the applicant's court to make sure that it's a safe place um my only concern and this might just be kind of an intellectual exercise more than anything is what's our right of redress is it is it coming back to the board, right? So if the if the police yeah. chief, it's not Chief Livingstone, it's somebody else, and they just come in and say, This is what you have to do. And we say, but why? You know, and it's just it's a question maybe for Rob more than anybody. Is that just well, a, I, a you know a modification to the special permit to eliminate permit. or modify this condition, saying yeah. XYZ, here's why. So that that's our right of redress, right? I think so. Okay. Mr. Mora. Yeah, there's that in in an unlikely case, it would be under appeal. So if, uh, you know, if the police chief was asking for something, the applicant wasn't doing it as a conditional permit, I would order the owner to do so. 
and then, and we then, come back that then way. the applicant would appeal to the ZBA and explain why they felt that wasn't proper or okay. the amendment. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, no problem. We're on board. Just massage that language. So, like, if it's increased, let's make sure decrease is in there. Or modify however you want to put it. Okay. So, I think we have, I sense consensus around this amongst the board members. Um, and just to restate it, bullet one remains the same, which is each door and entrance and exit. Number two, um, just flat out says you got to amend this bullet two to amend this to say uh, the owner shall have regular check ins. Number three, on site security, on site initially, on site security guard shall be provided. Bullet four, um, on site security writ large, and it's the chief of police shall. And then the language will be modified by staff to allow the chief to increase or decrease on site security requirements. And if, unless there's any objection, I would like to have that be approved and we'll vote on it as part of the whole package. All right, but that's with direction to staff to address that language. Okay. All right, no objection. 76 deals with the community garden. Um, I, you didn't come back, the applicant didn't come back with any changes suggested to this. So this seems to me that, um, and I think from the last, meeting they were uh, comfortable with this so i'd like to uh, approve this unless there's any questions from members of the of the um, board all right we'll consider that approved without objection um 77 is uh, all residents on the premises shall have access to the two community rooms i think you got to figure out how that's going to work with door locks and access but uh, you didn't have any objection to that. I think we should consider that um, approval. Unless there's any objection. And um, the last is sort of technical. The last two are technical. Um, before the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall submit an updated LC402 drainage utilities plan. You're going to have to do that, right? And 79 is the approved management plan shall be followed by the applicant. Any changes? So return to the zoning board. So I'd like to consider, I'd like to consider 78, 79, 77, 78, 79 as all approved. And we'll vote on them back. We have a couple other conditions that we have to um, vote on. I think condition two is the standard um, condition that says you got to build it by the uh, proposed um, or by the submitted plans, and that has not been approved so far. But I don't think there's been an additional plan submitted last, since the last meeting. So I think this list of plans is accurate, is it not, Maureen? This should work. Yes, this is the mo um, what's listed the there is recent. what most up to date um, okay. submissions. All right, so in that case, we, in case there was additional plan. That came up, so I'd like to consider this approved, um, unless there's any objection. And again, all that we voted on, and I think that's the last of them, isn't it? I, mean, I think we've hit on all of that. I Just believe so. More. I believe you have reviewed all the um, conditions. All the conditions. All right. The last thing that, and are there any other conditions board members wish to propose and discuss at this time? Okay, so what we have is um, I would entertain a motion to adopt the conditions one through seventy nine as contained in the um, project application December twelfth, twenty twenty two, with modification discussed in the meeting and with the staff's ability to uh, frame the language. Maureen. Uh, I suggest that you hold off uh, making a motion to vote on these conditions until after you go through all your findings and are ready to make your final vote on this application. Just in case uh, something pops up that perhaps one or all of us have forgotten about and uh, you would want to add another condition to it or modify a condition. Yeah, um, 
in general, I like to have the conditions set to make my to make my um, make my decisions, my uh, um, determinations and findings I have to make. So I I, I understand, Maureen. I, I do. That in case I get off condition, I think that's the case. Um, but I am not. I think you have been in this. Uh, you and Rob have been in these more often than I have, and I will uh, defer to the, your um, suggestion, especially on this meeting. <laughs> I'll defer to your suggestion that we hold off on the until uh, um, later on in case it wants to be modified. Uh, Ms. Marshall. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, your sound is breaking up, at least for me. I don't know if there's anything you can do about it. It's getting, it's getting more broken. It's well, you know what I can, what I can do is try to take off these damn, I hope my family gets me some new headphones. For this. <laughs> That's what I hope. That's what I hope. That's part of the official, yeah, official meeting. All right, thank you. All right, uh, can you hear me now? Good. All right. So the first condition, first determination we have to make, finding we have to make is 9.22. 9.22. Um, I think we'll find that on page. Oh, let me just find it. Uh, it should be uh, page 26. I got to increase your volume now. Hold on. There we go. Page 26. Is that what you said, Maureen? Right. Great. All right, 9.22, the um, important part of 9.22 is that it gives us the authority to authorize under special permit a non-conforming use of a building structure or land to be extended on a non-conforming building to be structurally altered, enlarged, or reconstructed, provided that the authority finds such alteration, enlargement, and reconstruction shall not substantially be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. In this case, that really deals with the um, lot coverage from 31% under the original to 35.2. And I think that should be 35.3 here. And as it reads here, it should be 35.3, uh, 35.3. And we have to make a finding that we do not find that, that increase in lot coverage will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than um, the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. And so I, um, I move that we make that finding. Um, is there any discussion? Is there a section to that motion? Mr. Maxfield, Maxfield seconds it. Thank you. Um, is there any, any discussion regarding that motion to make that finding? I guess I would just make sure that that's the finding we have to make and we don't have to make any findings for parking, do we, Maureen? No, you right. don't. Okay, cool. Um, there's no discussion and the roll call vote on the finding of 9.22. The chair votes aye. Mr. Max, Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mar Ms. Marshall? Aye. Next, we have to make a series of findings under 10.38, um, 10.380 and 10.3. I'm going to read through these all. We'll make a decision at the end on a, have a vote on 10.38 of total as opposed to voting on each one. Um, 10.380 and 10.381 are not applicable. 10.382, 3, 4, 5, and 7 deal with um, nuisance, vibration, water pollution, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights. Generally, it deals, all these deal with disturbance in the, in the community, um, lights or visual structures that are obje objectionable and convenient and safe vehicular and pedestrian traffic through the um, property. Um, I think that the, my view is that the applicant, that a lot of this was already taken care of in the first application. The changes that they make increase the likelihood that all this is being done including the additional security, but also I think there's an argument to be made that the prop, that the playground is more um, is safer where it is than where it was going to be. 
I think there's other changes that may, as well as bike locks will, more bike racks will make the place less likely for, for theft and other areas. So I think that we can make the case that the, um, the applicant is in, um, has indeed met the, uh, the needs, the requirements of 10.382, 83.85, and 8.7. 10.384 deals with appropriate facilities provided for the proper operation. Um, utilities are already there, so I think that finding can be made. 10.386 deals with parking signs. Um, Maureen, I th Maureen, I think we're in, we, they've done this. The board should make a finding that the applicant's proposal to substitute 20% of the standard parking spaces for the six proposed compact spaces in the 30 space parking lot. That's something we took care of in one of the conditions already, did we not? Uh, I, yes, you have made, made a condition relative to this, yes. Yep. And so in that case, we have, I think we've met the requirements under 10.386. 10.387, uh, uh, I think safe vehicular and pedestrian traffic is found on site. We didn't see anything that, and nothing in the new building makes that less likely. 10.388, 389, 38. Nine, nine, eight, nine, three, eight, nine, zero, nine, one are all not applicable. 10.393, uh, lighting is not applicable. 394 deals with um, wetlands and steep slopes, excuse me, steep slopes is not applicable. 10.396 um, is not applicable. 10.397 deals with adequate recreational facilities. I think that the, the um, additional playground, um, picnic tables, grill stations, and others that the are conditions are part of conditions that we made and that they have they have proposed do provide uh, adequate recreational open space and amenities for proposed use. Any discussion? And then ten point three nine eight is the proposal is in master harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw and the goal of the master plan. Uh, the use was previously approved by the board and needs to determine whether, the board needs to determine whether the proposed modifications to condition 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan site amenities, meet sections 9.22, they do, meet sections 10.33 and 10.38, we think they do, and we think they meet the goals of the master plan. Um, I, I think we can make those findings. So I'd like to have a vote on the 10.3 findings uh, and that we make those, uh, like that, Ms. Marshall. Did you mention 392? I just didn't hear it. I mean, I don't have any. It was oh, that's, you know, you know uh, the plan, you're right. I skipped 392. I didn't have a note on my good catch. 392 deals with landscaping and um, they're providing additional landscaping and indeed changing trees in order to um, accommodate the snow and the ice and the salt and everything else. So I think they, they meet the um, requirements of 10.392. So I would entertain a motion that the conditions under 9.2, under 10.38 and 10.39 uh, have been met, that we have identified. So moved. Second. Second. So we have a second from Ms. Parks movement. Ms. Parks makes a motion. Ms. Marshall seconds it. Any discussion? Roll call vote. All those in favor of it signify by saying aye. Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Aye. So we've made the uh, findings on um, both 9.22 and 10.38 and 10.38 and 10.9. Uh, now we have the conditions that we have to vote on, uh, to impose upon this application. Those conditions are one through 79. Um, they include um, authorizing the changes that we discussed, authorizing the staff to um, make those changes in accordance with our discussion. And um, I would entertain a motion to, to approve those conditions. Mr. Max, is there a second? Second. Ms. Parks seconds the motion. Any discussion from board members?
All right. Uh, I think it's clear that we, all, we are giving the staff also authority to make technical and conforming changes if they find anything uh, minor that they have to do to these to conform to our um, stated desires and the, the approved findings and conditions. If there's no further discussion, um, I'd like to, this is a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. That's a unanimous vote. Uh, the conditions are approved. The last vote occurs on the motion to uh, on a motion to approve the special permit application to modify the special permit, requesting a special permit. I'm going to get this right because we've had spent a long time doing this, so I don't want to screw up the last motion. So the motion is to request a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit 2028. 2018-21 for proposed modifications to conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, condition 4, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plans, management plans under 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Do I have a, a motion? So moved. Ms. Parks was first to the gate on this one. Is it, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Maxfield comes in second. Um, any discussion? All right, no discussion. The vote occurs on this. We require four votes for approval of this. Um, the chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Mr. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Motion's approved. Special permit is approved. Um, Congratulations and thank you for your patience and for working with us on this over these last four months. Well, thank thank each of you. Um, you know, I know there's been a lot of time and consideration for this project, and so thanks again for um, for all your your work and all your time. And look forward to working with the town to to build the project. Thanks and and great job, Maureen. Well, we're gonna miss you. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. It's it's been great working uh with you and uh and and with the ZBA, of course, and Rob course. Amora um through through the years. So yeah, um it's been fun. <laughs> we'll see you around, I'm see sure. Around. Yep. <laughs> the next order of business. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tom. Uh thank you, Mr. White. Thank, thank you, you. All right. Um the next order of business is public comment on, and Rob, stick around here, don't leave yet. Uh, public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. I see there's no attendees, no hands raised. Um, the last order is any business uh, not, within, not anticipated within the last 48 hours. I'm going to say that Maureen leaving is the business that was not anticipated in the last four, uh, 48 hours. Um, not anticipated and not welcome. But <laughs> I would say that I am really, I, I am uh, I'm not welcome. I'm not happy that you're leaving, Maureen. You know that. I really liked working with you. I think you did us a really good, you did a great job for us. You were a pleasure to work with. You worked really, really hard. You did a great job preparing us, me, and I know the rest of the, of the members. Um, I think you really, really contributed to this town over the last several years, and I liked working with you. I also know that you've given a great opportunity to go someplace and be in a leadership role. That's important as well. And so I'm really proud. I'm proud of you. I'm proud for you, and I'm happy for you. Um, and thank you all for what you've done over the last several years working with us. It really, we couldn't have done it without you. That's, okay. And I really mean that. We couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been my pleasure working with you guys. And I'm just a few towns away, so <laughs> you can come find me or, you know, I'll, I'll be stopping in in Amherst and there's um, and not as a worker, but as a visitor. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm around. Well, I hope we I hope we see you at Amherst Coffee out in front of uh, Fresh Side, because that is your um, I don't know what happened to your background. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, that fresh I took them down, so I took the my <laughs> screen down as well. Yeah, they're down for the <laughs> but the, those should be back up in the spring, I hope. The Rob, you and Chris are going to have 
big shoes to fill and a big job to try to find somebody to do this, uh, to work this hard. Uh, I hope you are yeah, able to get absolutely. somebody. <laughs> I hope you're able to get, otherwise you and Chris are going to be spending a lot of time with us and I don't, <laughs> you may not want that. No comment. All right. Um, again, Maureen, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Yes. You're here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Maureen. Thanks, everyone. Um, if there's no other new business, I'd entertain uh, Mr. Maxfield. I just had a quick one here. Um, I know when we did, it was now six months ago, when we did uh, election for, for chair, vice chair, clerk, and all that, wanted to put, put out that stipulation of if uh, I could perhaps step down early, if anybody else on the board would be looking for a chance to do that. We're at about that. It didn't sound like there was uh, a whole lot of enthusiasm, so I didn't think necessarily three months, but uh, John, what are you? Uh, what is your thought? I thought you might be another candidate who might want to... Uh, get some time in as vice chairman. Where, uh, where are you feeling on that right now? Uh, Dylan, I appreciate the offer. I will <laughs> say that um, I am pretty tight on time uh, with a full-time job and uh, some teaching and consulting work on the side. So just for the sanctity of um, not having to continually pull someone else into that role, I'm going to actually defer that. But I appreciate it. If, if, uh, if my schedule wasn't what it was right now, um, I think that would be a good fit. So thank, thank you for the thought. Absolutely. Thanks, Dylan. Well, that's, that's all I've got. Then I'll, I'll just say, yeah, uh, just going to reiterate what I think we're all going to take a turn saying here, Maureen. Yeah, we're all, we're all really going to miss you. Montague was lucky to get you, but man, we are, we are sad to lose you. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely, once we get somebody permanent here, I promise to, to give them a good hazing. So <laughs> That's for you. Good old hey, DBA wow. hazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, when Maureen was here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, definitely. Yes. Yes. Maureen, who will be filling your role? Who are we going to be working with from this point forward here on the ZBA? Uh, that's... Is that TBD? Uh, that's... Yeah. I mean, short, short term, it's going to be Chris and I. Okay. You guys ready to fill those shoes? <laughs> Couldn't even try. Yeah. <laughs> Marine, you will certainly be missed. Um, your work, you know, in the short time that I've, uh, you know, I've been here, of course, um, your work's been been really helpful in getting, you know, myself set up, which therefore, um, you know, also means the rest of the board. You're extremely thorough. It's been really great having you, you know, prepare these reports, make them very clear and easy to understand you know, hand them out to us if we're on site visit, drop them off in the mailbox. If, uh, if we aren't, you've been doing, you know, some, some really helpful work and, um, you know, really appreciate, yeah, your, your, your assistance and your service so far. Um, wishing you the best in Montague and, yeah. uh, you know, I'll hopefully bump into you at the book mill sometime. Right. Yeah. Grabbing absolutely. a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, are you moving out there? I take it you are. <laughs> I get that question a lot. One step at a time. One step at a time. I haven't started okay. yet. I haven't started yet. But maybe. You are in Amherst right now, right? Uh, no, I live uh, over the river. I live in Northampton. Oh, I thought you were okay. I thought you were more local here. Got it. You may take that other bridge then. Right. Yeah. 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 Bridge to Amherst. Yeah. Yes. Well, good luck to you in the transition. Thank yeah. you. All right, folks. And again, thanks, Maureen. Good luck. Thanks. Yes. Um, if there's no other business, uh, motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. No discussion on this motion. Um, <laughs> all in favor, say aye. Um, I have to do it by roll call. <laughs> Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Happy holidays. Thanks. Happy holidays. Bye. Good luck, Maureen. Bye bye. Thank